Welcome Game and App students to Video Game Sound Design, where we're going to be exploring how sound is integrated into video games. Ironically, my better microphone isn't working right now, so I'm going to have to use my headset one and have a bit of a poorer sound quality, but I guess life's like that sometimes, so just bear with me, and uh, I hope it's good enough sound quality for us to learn something new in this unit. This is going to be an exploratory unit where I teach you some of the core principles of video game sound design and let you experiment with a whole bunch of different combinations of ideas and see what you can create. What are you going to learn in it? Well, first, how to record your own custom audio, like sound effects, ambient audio, and music. This is going to be done mainly in the classroom, so if anyone's watching this on YouTube later without being in the room with me, well, you might have to figure out a few of these things a bit more on your own. We're going to be mainly learning the three main strategies for sound integration into video games. I'll talk about those in a sec. We're also going to learn some skills on how to inject sound in design-centered and effective ways into our games, and how to add, edit, adjust, and customize a variety of content inside our Unity project, sometimes to do with sound, but sometimes also to do with a couple other aspects of art importing and editing and placement of things. So what are these three audio integration strategies? First is what we call ambient audio. Think of this like sound that continually plays throughout a scene. This could be background noise, like the murmur or chatter of people in a coffee shop, music, like an epic orchestral piece or a quiet, uh, melodic, uh, emotional piano theme, or audio you want to be heard as if it were in your headphones. Stuff like maybe the narration of the story that's going on or maybe some important updates from a character that needs to be heard by the player. That's a little bit more specific, but generally speaking, this type of ambient audio just continually plays in the background and you kind of set it and forget it. The second type is called spatial audio. This is sound that is emitted from a source that grows louder as you approach. It's a bit like ambient audio, except you can't hear it when you're far away and you hear it increasingly more clearly as you approach, kind of like sound works in real life. This could be the crackling of a fire, the chirping of birds in a tree, the potter of an idling car, or many, many, many other things. Basically, anywhere that audio could be heard as you approach something, we want to consider spatial audio as our strategy to be used for this. And finally, we have something called one-shot audio. These are typically sound effects you want to be played once and at a specific time. This could be the sound of a button being pressed, a box breaking, a door creaking open, or one of an infinite number of other things. Think of these things as the triggered events of sound that happen in response to your player's actions. And we often populate a game full of these things. Something that's important to be mindful of as we're beginning to explore is that there is a different level of difficulty for each of these strategies. Ambient audio is actually super easy. You really just add an audio source component to something in your scene, connect the audio, and make sure it loops at the volume you want. And then you kind of just set it and forget it. Spatial audio is a tiny bit tougher, but it's still pretty easy. You do the same as the ambient audio, except you need to make sure you toggle a few settings to make the sound three-dimensional, as well as exist in the space that you want, specifically the size or the range of the sound, the radius. Because if you have the sound having a radius of like 10,000, it will be heard everywhere in the scene, just like ambient audio. But if the range is only 10 units, well, that means the player has to get quite close before they hear anything at all. So you'll be customizing and toggling those settings yourself. Finally, you have one-shot audio. This is definitely a little trickier. I say medium to tricky here because you can get it to be quite complex, and I'll, I'll show some kind of extension examples uh, when it gets a little more complex towards the end of these tutorials for some of you who are a bit more advanced to play around with. But because these sounds only happen when things occur in your game, you're going to need to connect them to pieces of code that tell the program exactly when to play them. This means that there is some coding knowledge required to get our one-shot audio to function in the way that we usually want it to. So for those who are a little bit newer to coding, you might want to primarily prioritize working with the first couple types. And you can get a pretty strong audio palette up and running with just those two. But for those who are a bit more ambitious, adventurous, or experienced, injecting the one-shot audio would be totally doable in some ways. And I'll let you play around with those as you get to them. So where do you get your audio? Well, there's three main sources. The first one is find it online. There's many websites with free audio assets you can download. Songs, ambient sounds, sound effects. Just make sure you give credit to the source you got it from if you plan on publishing your game in the future. If you're just making a project for fun or for class, you don't have to worry about giving that type of Creative Commons credit. But if we're going to be publishing it or sharing it online, we should be giving credit where 
required. You can also create it yourself. You can use tools like BadLab, which we've already used in our course, to create your own custom songs, ambient sounds, and sound effects using the instruments, tracks, and loops it comes packaged with. Once you've created something, simply download your creation and drop it into your Unity project, and voila, you have audio that can be used in your game. Or finally, you can record it yourself. Your phones have recording applications, and we also have audio equipment around that's sometimes available to us. At our school, we have a sound studio and some microphones. You may have other access to audio equipment in your own life, potentially, that you can use to capture sound of any type on your own. Want to perform a piece of music for your game? Have a great idea for how a real-world sound can make a cool sound effect using the Foley process? Love how a space in the real world sounds and want to capture that ambient audio for your game? There are so many possibilities for audio you can capture on your own. And I would love to see a huge plethora of these different self-recorded sounds injected into your custom experience. We're going to be making sound for existing content that I provide you with, but you're also going to be adding and injecting your own content, whether that's found or created yourself, into the world as you create to show me your understanding of sound and to just enjoy the experience of designing sound for a game. In the next video, we're going to dive into our first strategy. Actually, I'll give you an overview of Unity first, just as a reminder, and then we'll dive into some sound stuff. But for now, I hope you're looking forward to learning these new strategies, and I'll see you in the next one.